Hi, I'm Jessica Bolton from Daily Mirror and this is Jess Saying Live and I'm joined today by Dancing on Ice, big uh, king of the ring as I've named you Matt. Matt <laughs> Um, who's been in it since the very beginning. So lovely to have you here today, Matt. Thank you for joining me. Um, You're more than welcome. Now, it's you, you've you obviously, sadly, had to come out of the competition after Denise's shoulder injury. But has it has it been fun watching them all this week practicing? Because it's Love Story Week on Sunday, isn't it? It is Love Story Week. We have the greatest love stories on ice. And I think this week, historically is always a really defining week within the competition and within the show to really mm -hmm. weed out who we know are the favorites, who are the really great skaters and who are still, you know, kind of on that learning curve. Um, and I'm really looking forward to sitting in the audience again uh, at a distance at my cafe table all by myself with no oh, wine. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's, I'm really looking forward to this week because I've seen a couple of the performances in, in training and they look absolutely incredible. Because because we've had like Faye's uh, let slip that she's doing. She's doing Kate and Will's Faye Brooks and her partner doing that, which will be fantastic. Her and Hamish, and I believe Rebecca is doing Ross and Rachel uh, from Friends, which I cannot wait for personally. <laughs> I think that's going to be awesome. And uh, and also we got uh, Colin is doing Mr. Darcy. Which I'm hoping yeah. is the white shirt coming out of the lake bit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I've worked with I worked with Colin and Cabrera yesterday, um, coaching mm -hmm. with them in um, uh, at their local rink, and mm. so I've had a sneak peek at their routine. And I have to say, Colin has worked so hard. As we saw from the judges' critiques last week, it was all about his posture, and it was about mm. kind of getting back to the basics because he, he is a very adequate skater, but at the same token too, he still, he can get a little bit sloppy when it comes to his feet. Right. Um, and they have worked really, really hard this week, you know, in prep for movies week. And this uh, Pride and Prejudice routine that they are doing, it's beautiful. It actually is quite moving. So if they, if they can nail it, I think he'll score really big this week. So you think he might be because he was he was doing so well. He got really great <clears> scores, <throat> then he dropped right down to being the skate off, which must be such a blow to the confidence. Um, yeah, it really it really is. And I think what we are seeing this year, which is just incredible, is that leaderboard is flip flopping sort of every week. It's probably the first mm -hmm. time in quite a few series where the stakes are really high and the jeopardy is really high because we just don't know how. Because I think that, you know, the overall, the cast, they're really good Ooh. skaters. Uh, and they're all really good performances in their own right. You know, you've got Lady Leisha, who just is Ooh. nailing it. I mean, her facial expressions and her characterizations are just absolutely, I Pretty mean, they're lovely. hilarious. And yeah. then you've got Faye, who's beautiful on the ice. And then you've got some of the boys as well, as we saw a couple weeks back with Jason Donovan in um, the Priscilla Queen of the Desert uh, routine. I mean, I mean that was iconic. It just was. We have such an such an entertaining show this year that it's anybody's game right now. It's a really good mix of people when you say it. And and Jason, I mean, I was so hoping he was doing Joseph as well. I must admit, but um, I, I loved his Priscilla um, Queen of the Desert routine. Um, but last week with the tango that he did, um, I I mean, obviously, I'm not I'm not a professional. I don't see the little things that you all see. Um, but he seemed to have done a really good job, and yet he he got marked down quite a lot. Do you, do you think he can? get to that stage where he can be like beating Faye, who's perhaps a little bit more confident on the ice because she's had that bit more skating practice. Yeah, I mean, I think if we look at the technical side of it, which is, you know, why Jim and Chris are on the panel as judges, um, mm. we see things that, you know, you guys don't. And I think that's mm. what we're seeing is Jason has learned the skill and he's brilliant at the skill, but no, he isn't technically up to the standard of Sonny J or right. of, uh, of Faye. So I don't know if we'll ever get to see Jason top of the leaderboard, uh, but at the same token too, he gives you know some great performances. He's a great actor and he's very used to and very comfortable on stage if it's you know just a wood stage or if it is the ice. 
And yeah. what was nice, I did get to see, well, I worked with Jason and Alex last week and he loves it. And he is <laughs> devoting all of his time to this right now and has committed to the program 100%. And I think at the end of the day too, we have to keep in mind, it's 50% public vote. So yeah. the public love him because he was bottom of the leaderboard last week and he still, he was safe, he got through. <laughs> so yeah. we can, the public, with Dancing on Ice, the fans of our show, they're they're so true and we can never underestimate how they vote because, mm. you know, they they continue to give us life uh, through television. And, you know, it, it's hats off to them because they've, they've stayed faithful with us for so many years now. And, um, you know, as we get down towards the final as well, the public never, they never get it wrong. They always get it right. They, they do get a, a good history of getting good wins. We got a question here actually from Carol Sylvester. She says, who, who do you think is a real chance of taking the crown this year? Ooh, it's still a long way, but first off, hi, Carol. Um, we're still a long way off from the final, but I mean, our front runners right now are Faye, uh, mm. Faye Brooks. I think Sunny Day, he's a dark horse in this competition. You know, last yeah. week, his improvement was, I mean, it was tenfold. And I remember seeing him get on the ice as he skated out and started that performance last week. And I looked over at Lukash, who skated with Mylene, and mm. from, you know, because we're at cafe tables that are that are separated, obviously. We're at, yeah. we're at a socially distant space. But I was, I, I just went, oh my gosh, he's so smooth. So I'm, I predict that we're gonna see Sonny J creep up that leaderboard over the next couple of weeks. But right now, again, like I've said, it's anybody's game. As we saw yeah. last year, you know, yeah. we saw Joe Swash won the competition. He won the show and he barely, I don't even think he ever was top of the leaderboard. So, no. you know, are, is the public looking for the best skater or are they looking for the best performance? And That's if we're looking for around. if we're looking for performances, then we got to go with Lady Leisha. She she is great. I'm I'm loving Lady Leisha. I think she's yeah. she's taking me by surprise. She's one of the ones like Sunny J, who I didn't know so much beforehand, and I suspect a lot of the uh, viewers, the sort of older viewers, might not have been as aware of her. But as the weeks go on. Uh, you know, that's when they start getting in more public votes, like because yeah. we start to really love her performances and Sonny J's performances, and 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 you like you say it could be a dark horse for the thing. Absolutely. Now, now Denise Denise admitted herself she was a real beginner. Um, uh, honestly, that would be like me on the ice. I can't. I I can't <laughs> actually move on the ice. I was actually escorted once by you know those people that help. You you know, look out the marshals on an ice rink to the yeah. side because I just froze in fear. So um, I'm probably at about Denise's level when she first started. But, you, uh, I mean, she did amazingly to get from that to being on the show, uh, being able to perform on week one. Do yeah. you think, how, how do you think she would have done if she hadn't been injured? Do you think she would have still been in? I mean, it was such a heartbreak when we got the diagnosis that she mm. fractured her shoulder um, and that we had to withdraw from, from the competition. Uh, but you're right. Denise had never been on the ice before. And I can mm. remember this was back late October of last year when we first uh, met. It was a matter of I looked at her and I went, oh, God, I've got my work cut out for me this year. <laughs> like she and she was also scared of it. She you know, a lot of times we get the celebs who just get on the ice and they don't think anything about it. Yeah. And they just start learning, you know, but Denise, as we say, had the fear of it. And it wasn't until about a week before that first live show. Did she actually kind of understand what it was about? um in regards to the skating and she started to fall in love with it and then we call it when you catch the bug so right. it was i was devastated that our journey had to end so soon but at the same token too i think we would have seen some pretty incredible performances from her because she is absolutely brilliant on stage like in her cabaret yeah. show vocally she's incredible what we had planned for musicals week she was going to sing les mis live yeah. Um, yeah. As, you know while skating so I think while skating, that's what I wasn't sure about. Crikey. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and it um, we had seen it a couple of years back with Sara Alto. She had sang oh. a, um, she had sung a bit of Frozen uh, in her piece. So we were going to kind of continue that, and we'd seen Lady Alicia rap um, that first week. So I think yeah, we we missed out on some pretty incredible performances from Denise because of our uh, us having to withdraw. But yeah. you know, we're she's once she's healthy, she is going to continue to skate. Um, you know, she did the show initially so that she could get around the rink with her daughter, Betsy. So she wasn't one of those moms that just kind of stood by the side and had somebody else take her, her daughter out. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's a shame, but you know what? I, I've got a friend for life now. Are you gonna, uh, are you gonna meet up with her and teach her a few more tricks so she can uh, look Hopefully, good at once, once lockdown finishes and the ice rinks are able to open again, um, you know, of course, I will, I would love to get back on the ice with her. Uh, just a quick question from Jane Vaughan here. She's saying, um, how old were you when you started skating and how did you get into it? Oh, hi, Jane. That's the perfect question. I've got a really interesting story and whatever I tell it, everybody's like, oh my God, that's so incredible. So I actually started skating when I was nine years old and I grew up in Minnesota, which is uh, just underneath the Canadian border in the state, smack dab in the middle of the country. And it, Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes. So our state has roughly an average of about 10,000 lakes. And in the wintertime, it freezes. And it's cold for about five months out of the year like it is in the UK today. I mean, we're talking, you know, minus five to minus 30 degrees. So those lakes freeze over. Um, and one Christmas on my when I was eight years old, I got a pair of ice skates from my grandfather due to the mm. fact that we used to steal my aunt and uncle's skates and we living on a farm uh, a horse yeah. farm we used to sneak over to the neighbor pond and skate my cousin and i would skate on the neighbor's pond yeah i don't think they liked it very much nor was it very safe because we were unsupervised at seven eight years old yeah so i got a, i got my first pair of skates at eight and then um it was yeah it was that christmas that my grandfather had said oh that's just the start of your present and he took us out back and opened up um, sort of the curtains that look out onto the the actual farm and he had made us our own ice rink oh, so he had great. he had flooded one of the back pastures um and you know sort of swept away the snow yeah. so that we had our own rink and that's really how i started and and then you were you went into competing um is it how did you get into competing from there um you kind of i mean no pun intended you kind of just fall into it um, being the competitive person, I had played quite a few uh, sports when I was a kid. Obviously, the summer sports don't happen in the wintertime because we can't be outside. And so skating was really the only thing that we had that we could do um, at that point. So I started taking lessons at a local rink. Um, mm. And one thing led to another. And then within four years of me actually starting skating, I was competing on a national level. Uh, yeah. it just you get invited to a competition, and then if you do well at that competition, you get invited on through the circuit. And I think at that point, if my parents would have known what, how much money they were going to spend on the sport and me, they probably <laughs> would have deterred me <laughs> to just swimming or you know something like that. But try um, to be a football, it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean it's a it's an extremely expensive sport. Obviously, I'm very grateful for for the sacrifices that they made through my my early competitive career, um, yeah. and they're very you know they're proud of of what I've done. Obviously, but it's um yeah it, it was very interesting how I sort of started and um, carried and continued on with it. And, and of course, because in Minnesota, like the the snow we've been having the last couple of weeks is nothing to you, is it? Like that is oh my proper gosh. cold. It's weather. a daily occurrence. I can remember <laughs> my last year, my senior year of high school. Um, yeah. It was too snowy to drive, so I'd have to walk to school. And this is when we had moved to North Dakota, which is another state higher and um, more west than Minnesota. And there was 12 feet of snow that year. And of course, oh. it doesn't melt. It just stays. And you literally have to dig tunnels, well, tunnels, but sort of like on both sides, the snow would be 10 to 12 feet high on the pavement. 
so it just is it's a daily occurrence and you know like the past week when it's been snowing here and everybody's freaking out i'm like you guys this is nothing <laughs> this is nothing what are you talking about is <laughs> that no um wait, going back to with denise you moved in with denise as we know and uh, you talked about uh like uh, was that quite sad then having to leave denise's after that time together and what was it like living with her yeah um you know through we went into lockdown lockdown one uh mm. just literally a week after last series um and i had decided to stay for a couple of days in london after um series 12 had finished mm. and because it was my birthday and long story short on my birthday we went in lockdown and <gasps> flights were canceled i was due to fly out two or three days later and anyway make a years mm. long story short i got was stuck here since last series i've not been home yet um yeah. thankfully yeah. i was able to stay with a friend over the summer um who happened to have just bought a house in london so i had a place to stay um itv and dancing and ice were absolutely incredible incredible through that time because they would check in on me to make sure that it was all right um and we got my visa situation sorted and then the series started again and it just made sense because of where i live in london to where denise is in essex um that i wasn't traveling i didn't want to obviously we don't take public transportation right yeah. now because it's just yeah. not it's not safe enough for our cohorts um and i think not having been around a family environment for a year i absolutely loved staying with her and eddie and betsy um, yeah to be around another family, you know, I struggled really, I struggled hard and, you know, mentally it was really difficult for me, you know, not being able to, to get home and see my friends and family. So it was, it was absolutely perfect the past, you know, three, four months that we've had. And yes, now that I'm now cohorting back with the professionals, I'm not, um, we're, I'm not allowed to be with Denise at this point. So our bubbles have switched. So it was yeah. sad to say goodbye, but at the same token too, I'm happy because now I get my friends with the pros back. I see. Yeah. So you're now not, yeah. Were you doing a little bit of homeschooling of Betsy and really sort of helping out around the house? I'm just imagining a reality series. <laughs> yeah. Um, Betsy and I got along like, well, we do, we get along like a, a house on fire and I would have, she come home from school and I would help her with her schoolwork. We do our, her spellings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're just like anybody else. We're just keeping busy. Yeah. It's it's hard, you know, it's such a difficult time the past, well, the past year, but especially the past couple of months because the weather hasn't been nice enough for us to be outside and sort yeah. of enjoy that time outside. So yeah, we would have movie nights and Eddie would do kitchen discos and it was, it was just perfect actually. I love it, I love it. You got a whole second family here now with the Van Allen. I do. I, like, I do. The um, uh, you've you're now done the single as well. Like Denise has released the single that she was going to sing on the show, and you did the video as well, didn't you? Because this is another of your occupations. Well, you know, we have to keep in mind, dancing and ice is only on for five to five to six months out of the year, hmm. and then I fill my, you know, my I have to fill my time with something else. Another facet of my career is. Um, production, television production. And from when I graduated high school and my skating, competitive skating started to fizzle out, I hmm. jumped into uh, TV production. So, I mean, the past five, 10 years, I directed Nadine Coyle's single, uh, the Ooh. video for that. And it just made sense that when Denise had recorded at home, um, that track from Les Mis that we were gonna skate to that, you know, we discussed, hey, let's shoot a video for it. Yeah. So I do, I do a lot of directing on the side. I've got a, a social media content company that I do, that I work with quite a few brands on developing ideas and shooting and editing videos for, for them as well. So it's, I just, I love making moving pictures and putting music to it. <laughs> you must have like no time left for yourself matt honestly it's it's on my own isn't it the single that she's done and it's for the charity that's helping people who are in in theater and performances who, are, who aren't able to work at the moment from yeah front of yeah the, the yeah. charity the charity is called mad trust mad mm -hmm. trust um and it does support um basically all the front of house 
yeah. um, the non-actors within the theater community uh, across the country, really. And 100% of the proceeds for this video and the single are going to are going to trust. It's and again, it's another sad state of affairs because this industry has completely been left out by the government, yeah. um, and they don't get any help. You know, and understand. it's it's been over yeah. a year now that these that this community hasn't been able to work. And it's not people on the stage, it's people with all the jobs that are around there that people don't realize how many people are affected. But Absolutely. Uh, talking about living with your skating partners, um, obviously it's not the first time because you had to live with Pammy Anderson as well, didn't you? You moved in with I did. a while. <laughs> I have. I mean, over the over the past 13 years of Dancing on Ice, it's been, it's been an absolute whirlwind. Um, I've yeah. been so fortunate to work with some of the most influential women in the world. And I think the day that I met Pamela Anderson, you know, we don't, we're not told who we have prior to us meeting them. So you show up at a oh, ring and right. they happen to be there. And I found it interesting because that series, our celebrity um, producer, Jane Barker had flown out to LA and she said, oh. she had told me that, I was going to be based in Los Angeles for that series. And I was like, oh my gosh, amazing. I can live at home. Yeah. Um, and I had no idea. Like when you, sometimes in the UK, when you're told your location of where you're going to meet your celebrity, you might have an idea of who it might be because you've heard rumors of who might be auditioning and this, yeah. that, and the other. But when it's in Los Angeles, it could be anybody, right? Yeah. yeah. And um i showed up at the rink and as i walked through the door she skated past me just at the perfect moment and i just remember thinking actually what i said was shut the front door <laughs> which then james Gordon ended up taking and it, it actually made it into a couple of films um from you know from dancing on ice so yeah. i did have a, an incredible incredible opportunity to get to know pamela um i did i lived at the house with her in malibu which was a whole nother experience. Cause at one point I walked in um, into the living room and there was a guy sat there and I was like, oh, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Matt. And he yeah. stood up, turned around and I went, oh my God, it's you. <laughs> it was Brian Adams. Oh so my God. <laughs> Brian, I, I'd had a chat with Brian Adams and Jim Carrey lived across the street. And um, uh, we had, Pamela and I had a photo shoot um, for one of the magazines. And when I met Jim, it was, we had to use his property and to access the beach, we had to go through his um, his deck or sort of like his back right. garden. Oh, just so cut that, again, right now. Yeah, just normal. It just <laughs> literally was such a surreal experience and a whole, a whole nother world. And I'm like, I'm just a little ice skater over here. Like, <laughs> It must just be so bizarre being like, hey, okay, I'm just going to get up this morning. Where's Pammy? She in the kitchen? Uh, yeah, did completely. She, did she ever cook for you? Or was that oh, all, all the time. Yeah. No, did all the time. And she's a, she's a brilliant cook. And I think, you know, she's very much into her her healthy living. And yeah. I believe at that time she was vegan. I don't know if she is anymore. So, and it was kind of the first time I had ever experienced veganism um, and, you know, living off of a plant-based diet. Yeah. And I gotta be, I mean, I, I, I'm a Minnesota boy. I grew up on a farm, like I love meat, but I have to say, um, living off of a plant-based diet, you do feel different and you actually do feel better. So. If it works, who really knows? But yeah, who really knows? yeah, it's like, um, and uh, where you uh, at the time where you uh, you've had some other brilliant partners um, throughout the thirteen years. Can you tell me some of your highlights? I know it's hard to put into words because you have been on there since so day many. one. <laughs> yeah, so many. Each each and every series that I've done has had has had highlights. Um, but I think some of the biggest ones, if we go back more towards the beginning, Bonnie Langford, who mm. was actually, she was the reserve that year. I was supposed to skate with Arabella Weir, who was the comedian uh, um, who made the saying, does my butt look big in this? She right. made that saying famous, um, but she uh, had injured herself just before. And I actually don't know if she injured, injured herself on the show or if it was something you know, like she tripped at home or something. Mm. Um, but I ended up getting Bonnie Langford and Bonnie, Bonnie and I made the headbanger famous. Now in traditional skating, that move is actually called a bounce spin. 
It's not called a headbanger. But because Bonnie had hit her head on some of the first times we tried it, I it know. then became known as the headbanger. I so, didn't mean that right. Sort of like changed history, right? Yeah. So that that was a I mean, not that moment, but that series was really special because obviously it was the first. We had no idea what to expect, and it just was, you know, an absolute smash hit. Yeah. But then I think, uh, obviously, winning with Suzanne Shaw. Yeah, really. My third series, and still to this day, I get pe people that message to say that her flying because that's back when we used to fly. Oh, this is the Madonna number. Yeah. That I think was one of the first times that anybody had ever scored absolutely perfect. Um, and this number for us became really iconic, um, just with the, the way that I had choreographed it and the way that she had performed it. And it was the first time the headbanger had been done with a twist before. Yeah. Um, so there were a lot of firsts with Suzanne and she just was an absolutely brilliant um, skater. So winning with her, um, obviously Gemma Collins. Gemma the, Collins. The fall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that was has, has gone viral worldwide. <laughs> it's, Absolutely it, viral. Like, it, um, <laughs> she, she, uh, yes. I mean, what was it like? What was it like being partnered with Gemma? Because I mean, we had we saw so many stories about Gemma's had a stop backstage. This has happened. Was it was it hard work or was it good fun? It, you know, I've got a really special place in my heart for Gemma. She, again, she's two, she has two different personalities, right? She's got the GC that we all know, and then she has Gemma, which we are now slowly starting to see. And it was the same thing with Pamela. Pamela has Pammy at home, but then when the hair and the makeup comes on, then it's Pamela Anderson. So I, I was, I knew how to deal with somebody like that. The with, with Gemma, on the daily basis, she was awesome. Yes, it, I have to say, she's probably one of the most busiest women in, in showbiz here in the UK. She has her finger in every pie, mm -hmm. and it's not only her business, her clothing business, but you know the shop, and then all of her TV things as well. And she, would, she had missed a couple of training sessions, and she would always apologize if she was late or anything like that. But in regards to the strops backstage, that's gossip. And, yeah. you know, I think at the end of the day, anybody can can take, you know, if you're late to your your rehearsal, somebody can take that as, as oh, you're in your dressing room, you know, putting up a fight. And I, I'm honest, like I'm late all the time. You know, I try yeah. not to be. But when your studio day consists of getting there at seven o'clock in the morning, the girls go straight into hair and makeup. They're in hair and makeup from three to four hours. Then you've Ooh. got wardrobe. Sometimes you have press. Then you've got training and then you've got all these different things. Your schedule gets messed up sometimes. And I think she just had, you know, um, too many kind things. of too many. Pies. Yeah. She, she, well, I not within dancing on nice, but I think it just was she was kind of given the bad rap because, you know, she was late for a session or whatever had happened. Yeah. So, so she wasn't, you know, there's a very different side to her that we don't see. And we know she's got this kind of personality that she's a, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and you also made history with one Heather Mills when you were partnered with her. And also obviously last year with H, which was yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah. as the first same sex couple on, on Dancing on Ice and any show like that, uh, yeah. as you know, strictly then followed which very sadly they had to pull out but uh is 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 that one of your sort of most proud moments from from dancing on ice absolutely i think you know when i had received a phone call from our exec producer cloda um the summer before this series and she had said we're really excited we want you back however i have a question for you and i was like okay mm -hmm. what and she said well would you be open to skating with another man? Mm. And I went, 100%. Like, why yeah. not? And she goes, well, okay, just put that in your back pocket. I can't tell you anything yet, but um, this is what we're thinking. Nobody knows except for one person at the network and myself, um, this, that, and the other. And then literally two seconds later, she went, it's H from Steps. I want you to skate <laughs> with H from Steps. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh my God, how cool, because I had skated with Lisa Scott Lee yeah. you know 10 years 10 years previous so i yeah. had no idea what to expect um i you know it's never been done before so we were kind of writing the rule book 
um, on our sessions those first couple of months before you guys saw us live on Sunday nights on the actual show. Mm. Um, and it was it was something that I was very sensitive to how the public were going to receive it. Um, you know, being gay myself, I shouldn't care about that, but I do because, you know, I think a lot of my family members um, don't quite understand my lifestyle. And, you know, being empathetic to other people and especially the fans of Dancing on Ice, I, I didn't want to create something that was going to shove it down somebody's throat. I wanted to make sure that it came from a place of love in a place of understanding. And at the end of the day, it just should have been, which it was, two people yeah. can dance together. Two people can skate together, regardless of if it's, you know, male or female or whatever. You know, you you and your girlfriends used to go to the club and dance together all the time. Yeah. That doesn't mean that there's anything more than that. Yeah. I was gonna say, is it important that it becomes less of a a big thing? Uh because as, as long as it's a, a big thing, oh my gosh, it's a first same sex couple, then it's still saying it's different yeah. from what it should be, of is course. what you're saying. And isn't I think, it? yeah, and I think it, it, it needed to be a big thing, and it does need to be a big yeah. thing so that it doesn't have to be a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and we, the, the outcry or the outpouring of love and support that we had on the world circuit, I mean, it wasn't mm -hmm. just. Um, you know, the fans here in the UK, it was, I mean, the messages were by the thousands, um, okay. you know, after that first skate. And I mean, Ms. Michelle Visage and RuPaul and all of these like LGBT figureheads were sending us messages. And it just, I mean, it, it just was incredible. It was absolutely incredible for the world and for, you know, ITV. Yeah, it, I mean, it was fantastic. And uh, it, June here says, uh, Matt and H, shame they didn't get the votes they deserved. I mean, you did really well. You went out what, in the seventh week, was it? Was it am yeah. I correct? Yeah, I think it, so, yeah. You, you did fantastically well on the show, and I know H loved it. And uh, mm. uh, you, um, I, are you still in touch with H? Do you still? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. All the time. Um, we, I mean, it was really, it was interesting because, you know, as soon as the series last year finished, we went straight into lockdown. Mm. Um, so it was a matter of, we used each other as support because mm. we had just come, you know, out of that bubble basically, but still this year, like every, <laughs> every Sunday night, I get a cheeky text message from him. He's like, what's the gossip with the show? And I think, <laughs> you know, the celebs that enjoy the show, that enjoy the process of it, they miss it a lot after, mm. after their series. Um, and so he's on, he's on the, the phone every week. Um, you know, we chat about what's happened, what he thinks and this, that and the other. So it's, yeah, we've got a, a yeah. nice friendship. A nice friendship from it. Because I, I know it's, you, it's LGBT uh, month this week or LGBTQ uh, plus month this uh, this month, isn't it? Yes. Um, and, uh, and I know that you, I mean, obviously it wasn't that long ago that you sort of came out to uh, uh, publicly to, to yeah. fans. Um, how important is it to you for these sort of change? Do you feel things have changed in terms of perception um, over the years? I know we were talking before about the It's a Sin program on, which is great that Russell T Davis has done. And I know, mm. do, do you feel perceptions have changed now today than what they would have been even say when you started on Dancing on Ice? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think fortunately enough here in the UK, it's not illegal to be gay anymore. No, it's no. not illegal to be different. Um, and I shouldn't even say different, but, you know, from what the norm is. And thankfully for the likes of, you know, ITV with Dancing on Ice, Strictly with their same sex partnership, Russell T Davies with his programs and so many other programs and, you know, figureheads, you know, like the Graham Nortons, like Alan Carr, they are normalizing it. Uh, and it is it is very important uh, that we give today's youth the support that we didn't have as kids. Mm. Um, you know, and you hear stories like RuPaul himself saying when he used to watch television, there was nobody like him on TV. Mm. Um, especially, uh, you know, where we're at now, we're seeing that this queer culture um, is fashionable. And especially within entertainment, queer content is ruling. I mean, you cannot touch Drag Race. No, you know, in the no. ratings. 
yeah. and the it's a sin was you know uh, channel four's highest ever rated streaming mm -hmm. series so it's it's really interesting how accepting the world is becoming and mm -hmm. if i get this much political now that donald trump is out i think this hate Mm. is is going to you know hopefully disappear you know he mm -hmm. gave unfortunately he gave the haters a voice yeah. and you know I'll, we're done with that now and i think love is as my as my sweatshirt says my hoodie says we are it, all starting to choose love we're all starting to choose that and i know i know that program incident was emotional for you because of your uncle as well because i mean that's a time that we were both probably too young to really remember um mm. but but watching what people had to go through at that time and that kind of prejudice about HIV and AIDS and everything and I know your uncle uh, you know obviously mm. you tragically lost him I know you mentioned before yeah uh, yeah my, my uncle my uncle over the past 10 years my uh, unfortunately he's not with us anymore but he's become a bit of inspiration for me um mm. firstly I used my experience um from his his life to come out um in regards to you know my uncle as far as i know always knew that he was gay from when he was really young and he mm. was sort of banished from the family at the age of 16 um was kicked out um and this was you know in the sort of early to mid 70s and watching it's a sin you know uh I, I remember after the first episode had finished and basically thinking, oh my God, this is exactly what my uncle would have gone through. And I remember when he did pass, um, being on the phone to my father, who was, it's his brother, um, just bawling my eyes out saying, I just feel so sad that he never knew the love of his mother because yeah. of his, his, um, his sexual preference. Um, and so watching It's a Sin, it just was a pure reminder um, in history of, of what happened in the 80s here in the UK and not just in the UK, but in, around the world. And it really puts it into perspective of what we're going through right now with COVID. Mm. You know, these COVID patients sit in these wards on their own and they're not able to have their families with them. Um, and I think it just really, it was, you know, the perfect timing for us to learn from history and how thing people were treated back then and how you know fortunately the lgbtq plus community is not treated right now mm -hmm. here in the uk um but yeah it's a really it's a it's an extremely strong program and i'm i'm very fortunate that perceptions have changed on a on a on a lighter note because i know i'm using, <laughs> using up your time i'll go get told off in a second um what you you you've been judged by so many different people over time what is it like being judged by tall women as a professional Must, do you still pinch yourself that you're performing for the olympians that did, got not Belen not only just performing for them but also getting to skate with them um uh, the first couple of series, I would go on to work every day and it was just this constant smile of, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I am here on the ice being taught by Jane and Chris, given yeah. choreography by Jane and Chris, you know, them judging us every single week. And I think the ultimate goal for anybody, you know, if you look up, look up to somebody within your profession is to be able to become friends with your heroes. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what's happened. And I'm, I'm just so blessed. And I still, it never gets old. You know, okay. we've pre-recorded some of these, these group numbers back in, uh, back in December. And there mm -hmm. is a number um, that I can't say anything about other than the fact that Torval and Dean are a part of it. And as we've seen in previous series, the pros are a part of it as well. And it's just those moments that I just, <laughs> it's I'm like, I can't believe I'm here right now. It's can't pretty believe incredible. It. And and quickly, you've now got Ashley Banjo and um, John Barrowman as the other two judges. Um, what do you miss, Jason Gardner? Are you relieved you're not going to get? Because he was he was sort of our Mister Nasty on the panel, wasn't he? He was very he you know, was, sharp, yeah. sharp tongued, Jason. Is, is it a relief now that you haven't got Jason remarks coming at the end of your performance? Or I th I think the panel this the past couple of years is so well versed in. Mm what this show is about. 
you have two performance judges and two technical judges, which is a perfect fit, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Jason is, um, and I'm sorry, Jason, um, Ashley is an expert in his field in performance and dance. I've worked with, uh, I've been lucky enough to work with Ashley on the Full Monty, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, and he's just an absolute wizard when it comes to artistic design and different things like that. And then John Berryman, Mr. Fabulous, um, is the ultimate entertainer. So yeah. I think the way the panel sits right now is is absolutely brilliant and it's perfect for what the show needs. Well, I, I think you must be so relieved not to get that scary kind of, oh, what's what's he going to come out with this week? As I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not not so much me, but I think the celebs by all the means celeb, are, yeah. are fortunate I mean, for you're that. You're half of your celeb partner, you know. Um, just, just the last question, because we've seen that Gemma Collins is going on Piers Morgan's Life Stories, which I believe is on tonight. And uh, she she's talking about some of the really hard things that she's been through. Like she, she actually admits that she had suicidal thoughts um, when Arj was really poorly and, and she was struggling with that. And she also talks about how she got fat jibes in the street and people would make these comments. And I think it's re what's really nice is we see a different side of Gemma, which we touched on earlier is, uh, I mean, do, do you think that's nice that the public get to see her more vulnerable side? Absolutely. I think, like I said, I, I've known two sides to Gemma. I've known the GC and then, you know, Gemma herself. Um, and working with both of them, um, they're two completely different personalities. And I understand why she would have the GC as a persona. You know, she's been through a lot in her life. Um, she tries to hold her head above water just like we all do. And, you know, pretend like those comments don't hurt, but they do, yeah. Yeah. you know? And I think in the this day and age of online trolling and online bullying, it's very difficult for anybody um, to maintain any level of sanity um, and to not let those comments affect you. And I'm very, very, very proud of her that she's now starting to open up and we're getting to see the real Gemma, the Gemma that I've known yeah. Um, and I'm I'm really looking forward to watching the show tonight. Yeah, I, I am as well. And um, very last thing, we just had a comment up there from June who says she wants to see you as a judge, which I I'm kind of seconding there, Matt. If any chance oh, in the future? <laughs> I I have no idea. I love my job. I love the show. It's been a part of my life for so long. Um, and I will I'll take whatever I can get. Let's just say that, <laughs> especially in this day and age. Exactly. No plans to leave in the foreseeable. No, not by any means. Good, good. Uh, uh, who's who's your celeb you really want, or can you not tell me that? Oh, like a future celeb I'm that I'd love to skate celeb. with? A dream celeb to be partnered with. Hmm. Zac Efron? Oh, good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to start campaigning on that now. And Let's get on I that now. Like on the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matt, you have been absolutely brilliant. I'm going to have to let you go before I get really told off. Um, That's all right. Yeah, we got to get back to the ring. Back to the ring. <laughs> but thank you very much for your time today. Hope everyone's enjoyed that. Can't wait for Sunday and Love Story Week. Uh, yes. Cheers, Matt. It's been lovely to speak to you. Thanks, Jess. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.